Wow, what a powerful message, you know, the brother before me had, uh, the young man. And uh, we never talked about what I'm going to speak about, but it's about the same thing. Uh, just encouraging all of you. We sang so many songs, so powerful songs that uh, encourages us and uh, makes us believe that, you know, God is in this house. Do you feel his presence? As I do. We have a guarantee that he's here. He's telling us that through his word, through the songs we had. And uh, the Holy Spirit is here, and he wants to touch every single one of us. I have a question that I want to begin with. Do you love Jesus? Yes. How much do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus enough to follow him? Because many people say, well, brother, I just turned to Jesus. Well, I turned to Jesus many times. But many times I did not follow him. And he wants us not just to turn to him, but to follow him. If we love him enough, do we love him enough to obey him? If we obey him, you know, then we obey his word. Because that's what he says. He says, you tell me you love me, but do you obey me? Do you obey my word? So we really have to obey exactly what the Bible says. My message tonight is about the past, the present, and the future. Many of us... It's either we live in the past, or we live in the present, or we live in the future. And some of you might ask, how do you do that? Well, if you live in the past, you live with regret. You live with shame. You always tell stories of the past. You always tell everybody what had happened to you. Okay. God doesn't want you to live in the past. Some of you, and including myself, sometimes I find myself in the future. I find myself living with anxiety. What is going to happen tomorrow? What is going to happen to me? What is going to happen to my family? What is going to happen to my job? What is going to happen to my health? And God doesn't want me to live like that. God doesn't want you to live like that with anxiety, with worry. If you worry, it doesn't make you a warrior. It makes you a worried person. <laughs> and the thing is, Jesus died for all of us, so we don't worry about nothing God wants us to live in the present because he's in the present he's in our lives the Bible tells us if we have Jesus we have peace do I have peace do you have peace if you don't have peace you don't have Jesus but if you have Jesus you have peace you have a peaceful life and you're living content, and you're thanking God, God, I thank you for what I have. Because many times, instead of enjoying, today is such a beautiful day. Instead of enjoying this beautiful weather, you know, somebody's going to say, yes, but you didn't look at the, you know, weather. In the next few days, it's going to be really bad. It's going to rain a lot. That's not something we can control. That's out of our control. We really have to look at what today is, what God has in store for us, because tomorrow does not belong to us. I do not have a guarantee that I'm going to be here tomorrow. When I say here, I don't mean necessarily here. I know I'm going to be at work, but I might not be alive. But I have to thank God today. If I need to repent, then I need to repent today. If I need to ask God for forgiveness, I need to ask God today. The only reason some of us Okay, or some of you are not forgiven is because we don't ask for forgiveness. And what's holding us back from asking for forgiveness? Pride. I'm too proud. Many times I went hungry because I was too proud to ask. I was like, well, I'm really hungry, but I'm not going to ask anybody, you know. I wonder what they're going to say. And I went hungry until I was so hungry and I wasn't proud anymore. I was so humble and I was like, man, I need something to eat. Can somebody help me out? And I've been there. And I just thank God for everything, you know, God has given me. If we look in the Bible, every single miracle that God has done. Okay, first, what did he do? He gave forgiveness. He didn't heal the sick until he forgave them. 
He did not deliver anybody until he forgave them. Lately, I've been using glasses to be able to read. Um, some people say because I'm getting old. Usually my kids say that to me. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll get them back about 40 years from now. <laughs> I'll ask them, you know, how it's like to be old. Uh, but uh, sometimes I'm a little bit dyslexic and I forget, you know, what I'm supposed to say next. So bear with me. Um, you know, I understand God you know, allows me to go through some stuff like that so I can understand others. But uh, I look at Jesus. Who is Jesus for you? He's there to provide everything that you need. If you need healing, He's the healer. If you need forgiveness, He's the forgiver. If you need the pro protection, He's the protector. Years ago, I studied uh, personal protection. I would even call it law enforcement. And I studied cases where people had 100 bodyguards around them. And there was not enough to protect them. The thing is, when we have Jesus, he sends his angels to protect us. And we're being protected. A bulletproof vest will not protect anybody. You know. When they sell it, they say, well, it protects you. Well, many people have passed away with, with a vest on. Or maybe other, you know, maybe a disease, you know, hits you. Who can protect you? Some people say, you know what, I have money. I can buy the best doctors, the best medicine on this earth. How many, I'm not going to say millionaires, because now we have more millionaires than ever. But say, how many billionaires have died of cancer? Many of them did. Thing is, we have Jesus. He's here to heal any one of us. Not because we deserve it, but because He paid the price on the cross for us. He knew us before we were even born. I'm really bad with names, and I ask people the same thing again and again. Hey, what was your name again? And because, like I said, my memory is not as good as somebody else's. I know people you know, that remembers everybody's name. You know, which sometimes is good, sometimes is not so good. Me being able to forget, uh, it really helped me get away from my past because I forgot a lot of things of the past that was holding me back. And God didn't want me to look back, didn't want me to look at my past. The devil will always bring your past up. The devil will always bring the past. I had instances where the devil brought the past to me Things I've done 35 years ago when I was 12 years old, 13 years old. And I talked to people in their 90s and they said, no, the devil will bring you stuff, you know, from eight years ago. <laughs> because that's all he does. And we just have to tell him that, hey, you know what? That was in the past, but I was forgiven. Did you check with Jesus? He already forgave me. Amen. What you're telling me doesn't matter. The devil is always in a hurry to do a background check. But Jesus doesn't care who you were before. He cares who you are today. The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Also, the Bible in Hebrews uh, chapter 13, verse 8, it says, Jesus Christ, yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. We change. Many times we say, I don't feel... I don't feel like Jesus is listening to me. I don't feel like I'm close to God. We don't have to live our lives based on feelings. We have to live our lives based on faith. And faith is based on the Word of God, which is a fact. It does not change. People change religions, but they don't want to change themselves. They change churches. They say, well, I'm going to go to a different church, maybe get a different outcome. And they don't get it because they are not willing to change themselves. I look in the, in the Bible, in Genesis, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So we established, the Bible has established that there was a beginning and God was there. 
Also in Revelation, at the end of the Bible, it says, He will wipe away every single tear. There will be no more pain. No more suffering. And we will be with Jesus forever. Many times I, I spoke about how many times Jesus, God, has saved my life. And not too long ago, I realized, which life am I talking about? This physical being, this physical life? Sure, many times. But God wants you to save you your eternal life that is in Christ. Because you can live the best life that you, you know, the earth can provide today. But if you lose your eternal life, you lost everything. It doesn't matter, you know, what car in the car you drove, what neighborhood you lived in, what kind of rank you had, what position in society. It matters the eternal life that Jesus died for. And he's ready to, to offer it to anybody that will take him up on his word. I remember talking to somebody and they said, well, uh, Brother Lucas, you mentioned something about uh, going to the Super Bowl, but I didn't get the whole thing last time. Can you say it again? And I, and I said, well, maybe I'm going to repeat it this time. I said, say, for instance, if somebody offered you tickets to the Super Bowl. And they said, well, they're at the gate. Just go over there and they're waiting for you. Would you go? Why not? It's a chance to, you know, see a Super Bowl, if you like football. I'm not a, much of a football fan. But you would go. You take them up on it. If it was somebody you would trust, right? Somebody that never lied to you. Well, here we have Jesus telling us, just trust in me. That's the only thing God cannot do. God cannot lie. It is impossible for God to lie. Everything else is possible for God to do. When the rich man was asking about going to heaven... And because his heart was with his riches, you know, the answer from, from Jesus was, you know, everything is possible to the Father God. Everything is possible for, for God. You know, he just wanted to show how powerful God is and anything is possible for him. So if any one of you says, you know what, you don't know me, you don't know my past. Well, God knows your past and God loves you. We learn to love the things of the world. And the Bible says, do not love the world or the things of this world. And yet we do. I came to this country 33 years ago. I spoke no English. I only knew how to count 10. That was about it. Now I know how to count to probably 100 or something. And I told myself, you know what? This English language is so hard, I'll never be able to speak it. But I prayed about it. Within a few months, I started talking to people. And I was like, wow, they understand me. They're actually answering me back. You know? So it was a struggle. It wasn't just for me, for many of us. You know? Some of us need you know, translators. And uh, when we pray to God, it doesn't matter what language we pray in. It doesn't matter if we pray in English or Hebrew or Swahili or Whatever language it may be. He's the one that understands us. Sometimes if you just meditate at his word, he understands you. He knows your pain. He knows your suffering. He knows exactly who you are. That's what's so amaz amazing about God. That he's ready you know, to receive every single one of us. Many of us, we go through suffering because this is life. But we look at the future, what God promises us. There will be no more suffering, no more pain, no more crying. Fifteen years ago when my daughter, and I mentioned this before, some of you heard me, some of you have not. When she was diagnosed with cancer, stage four, there was nothing the doctors could do for her. You heard people say, well, the doctor gave me two months to live. Well, they gave my daughter about eight hours. It was in the evening, and they said, she's not going to make it till morning. She's here today. She's sitting, standing back there. So God is amazing. Have you ever felt abandoned? You can raise your hand. 
If any one of you have ever felt abandoned. I felt abandoned and I was abandoned by people. When the team of doctors that came in to tell me the bad news, there's no good news, there's nothing they can do for her. She's so weak and that there's no life. And out of their experience, she's not going to make it till morning. Because she's so sick and she's so weak, they cannot give her any type of medicine. Not even for pain. And they said, if we give her anything for pain, because she was hurting so much, and I asked them, please give her something, she's not going to be hurt anymore. And they said, if we give her anything, she's going to die. This way you have her till, probably until morning. And it was just me and her. Or her and I, to speak proper English. <laughs> And they left. I felt abandoned. But then God stepped in. I felt his presence. And he said, it's not too late. Because I'm the God of yesterday and today and forever. I'm the God of 2,000 years ago when I was healing the sick. You read in the Bible, you know, he, he, he healed so many people. He says, I'm the same God that raised Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was dead for four days. It was not too late for Jesus. He says, I'm the same God. So it's not too late for me. Anything you ask in my name, I'll give it to you. And there, I start doubting. Because I've been lied to by people. And I start doubting. And, and, and here I am doubting even what God is telling me. But I told myself, you know what? At the time, I was 33 years old. And I said, uh, okay, let's see if this works. I'm going to try it on this little child. My daughter was three years old. I'm going to try it on her, see if she believes. And I said, Victoria, anything you need in right now, Jesus will deliver for you. Not anything you want. Do not ask for a toy. I, don't, I doubt that God is going to give you one. And she says, no, I just need my pain to go away and we start praying and I said God for your namesake just like Psalm 23 says he doesn't do it because of us but he does it for his namesake because we're his children and he's the provider and he's the healer so we start praying and this little child believed a hundred percent and she starts talking to God but before we start praying, she's asking me, well, do I pray in Romanian or do I play, pray in English? You know, what language does God speak? All of them. And she starts saying, God, please, please, please touch me. Please heal me. Have mercy on me. And that's all it took. But it took faith. It took faith. A three-year-old child doesn't have no sin in their life. There's nothing, you know, stopping them. And many times, you know, what's stopping us? It's our sin. Because instead of looking at Jesus on the cross, that he died for all of us, we look in the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, you see your sin, sin, sinful person. When I've done something wrong, I look in the mirror and I was ashamed of myself. And I said, God, you know me. You know everything about me. How can you still listen to me? You know what God is telling me? It's because Jesus died for you. He loved you so much. Many people like statistics. And one of them says, well, and the Bible says about 365 times. So for each day of the year, God is telling you, do not fear. Fear not. And many times we're afraid to even ask God for something because we're afraid of not receiving it. And he says, ask and you shall receive. Knock and it shall be opened for you. So we start praying, Victoria and I, and I say, God, right now, what's the most important is for her pain to go away. And we start praying, and I went to the restroom to wash my face, because I'm a big crybaby, I cry a lot. There's no shame in that. 
Amen. Amen. There's no shame in it. Because some, af afterwards, after God healed her, there were so many times that I cried out of happiness. And I said, God, I thank you. Now I cr my crying is for, for, for joy. And I said, right now, my daughter needs healing. And I'm asking you today, what's the most important thing in your life right now? But r right now, right now, is to be able to breathe. That's what keeps you alive. When I was about 16 years old, I was diagnosed with uh, asthma. And I couldn't breathe. Instead, I had, I had an inhaler, and I couldn't leave home without it. They said, you know, if you have an asthma attack, you're going to die. And my dependence was, was on that thing, on that inhaler. I said, God, I don't want to be dependent on that. God wants us to depend on Him. Doesn't want us to depend on medicine. Doesn't want us to depend on drugs. Doesn't want us to depend on doctors. Especially nowadays, so, since they are so expensive. And uh, God is always there. My little girl, you know, when I come back into the room, to go back to my story, like I said, you know, my dyslexia sometimes kicks in. I go back to the, to the room and uh, she says, Dad, I'm not hurting anymore. Jesus touched me. By the way, I'm hungry. She hasn't eaten in a couple of days, so she wanted to eat something. And that was the process. So for about four months, I stayed there with her. And I've heard a lot of people cry. I've heard the alarms, you know, go off in the morning. The team of doctors, you know, rushed in, and it was too late. I could hear the parents screaming. The little child passed away, and I was asking myself, God, why them and not me? I'm not a better person than those people. But God's mercy and His grace was bigger. And we all need God's mercy and His grace. And I'm not speaking of stories I've heard. I'm speaking from reality. I'm speaking from what I lived. And sometimes it's still a struggle. Because I ask God, you know, for something this big and He delivered. And sometimes I'm afraid to ask God for something small. I'm afraid to say, well, God, you know, I'm asking for this, but I'm not sure if you're going to do it for me. If it's necessary, God will do it. But you just have to believe in Him. You just have to trust Him. God is ready to deliver anybody from any type of sin, any type of addiction. And I don't want to hear this. Well, this is who I am. No, this is who I was. I'm a changed person in Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13, I believe it says, I can do everything through Christ that strengthens me. We can say that all of us, I can do everything through Christ that strengthens me. God is the one that gives us strength. Way too many times we live based on feelings. I don't feel like it. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like, well, we just have to live through faith. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we know God is in control. Amen? Amen. He was in control in the, from the beginning, and he's going to be in control until the end. Many people watch the news and they say, well, what if? What if this war is going to start with different nations? I'm not going to name anybody because I don't know what the future brings. But I know God is going to be in control. What if they're going to send a rocket and it's going to do so much damage? I'm not going to worry about it because God is in control. What if we're not going to have enough food? Well, God provided for his people. We are his people. You are his people. If you don't think you're a child of God, if you don't you have heaven not given your life to God, today is your day. Today you can become a child of God. Today God wants you to come to Him. He fed His people for 40 days? No, for 40 years. Out in the wilderness. For 40 years. Every morning they would wake up and there was food. Every single day. They didn't skip days. They didn't say, well, you know, there's a ration. No, God gave them enough for every single one of them. 
About 17 years ago, I had an uh, anxiety attack, and I was afraid of what if I get sick? Who's going to take care of my family? And God told me, do not worry. And I was worried so much until I, I just didn't know what to do. And God wanted to show me that there was nothing I could do about it, but he could do everything about it. I went to the doctor. They gave me some medicine, and the medicine didn't work. Actually, it was making me worse. Before, I used to worry sometimes. Now, I was worry, worrying all the time. And I said, I don't want to take this medicine. It alters my brain. I cannot pray. I cannot trust in God anymore. We're worse. I'm dependent on the medicine. Wake up in the morning, I have to take the medicine. That's not what God wants. When you wake up in the morning, what you have to do is pray. And we have so many reasons to pray. So many reasons. I've seen people where they mess, make a list of the things that they need to pray. And a lot of times we just pray for ourselves. But also it's so important to pray for one another. It's very, very important not to live for yourself anymore. Many times we're being selfish. And I think of, my, of myself. But when you're born again, selfishness is going to go away. You're going to live for one another. You're going to make sure that somebody else gets fed before you do. Because God transforms you. We hear the saying that, and I've, I've, I've heard people tell me this, why don't you act like a Christian? The thing is, do we need to act like Christians? Nope. God doesn't want actors. God wants people to live like a Christian. To obey God, that's what being a Christian is all about. And when you live like a Christian, well, people are going to think you act like a Christian. But God knows you're, gonna, you're living as a Christian. God knows that you're not just a fake. You're not just a movie prop. You are a real Christian. And you live like a Christian, not just when you're in church. Not when you're just around other Christians, but you live as a Christian all the time. And there's only salvation. The only salvation is through Christ. There's no salvation out of without Christ. Without Christ, there's no way of going to heaven. Because he was there in the beginning. He prepared the place for us. And he went back to prepare a place for us. And he's going to come back and take us with him in the place that he prepared. We don't know how long the time is going to be. Some of us are going to see God, you know, show up on, on the clouds. Some of us, maybe he's going to call, call us you know, to him, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. None of us know what tomorrow brings. None of us know what tomorrow brings. But we know for sure that God is going to be in control tomorrow as well as is today. He provided for you yesterday. He's got, he provides for you today. He's going to provide for you tomorrow. We just have to live in the present. We have to be at peace with God. We have to be full of joy. And I say, God, thank you for being here today. Do not have anxiety what tomorrow brings. I cannot think of a better place of being than here in church I love being in church, and I want to say something. I'm afraid of coming up here. That's why I don't come here very often. It's not an easy place to be, because we have, I have a responsibility. Everybody has a responsibility. When you come up here, it's not my opinion. It's got to be the Word of God. And if my opinion differs from the Word of God, please do not listen to me. But we have to listen to what the Word of God says. How many of you heard, have heard of the 10 suggestions in the Bible? Amen. 
Amen. It's the Ten Commandments, not the Ten Suggestions. God does not suggest you turn to Him. Does, God does not suggest you love one another. It's not optional. He commands you. And He doesn't say, whatever you ask in my name, I might give you. I might do for you. He doesn't say that. He says, I will do it for you. So he's not suggesting that we turn to him. He's not suggesting, well, read the Bible. If you believe it, then it's okay. If you don't believe it, it's fine. No, it's not fine. It's a guarantee of being saved. It's only through his word. Salvation comes from God. It doesn't come from man. It doesn't come from a religion. There's no guarantee, well, I went to church all my life, you know, that means I'm going to be saved. The only guarantee you have if you gave your life to Christ. If there's any one of you that has never given their life to Christ, today is your day, today is your chance. There, if there's any one of you that think, well, I'm not ready right now, I'll probably do it a week from now or maybe a month from now or probably next year. You might not have that chance. A co-worker of my dad was telling my dad, this is years ago, he says, you know what? I'll become a Christian when I retire. He was a truck driver like, us, my, like my dad was. He never got to retire. He was a good man, but he didn't give his life to Christ. And it wasn't just one, it was many of them saying, you know, one day I will, one day I will. That day is today. We have the pastors ready to pay, pray for you. We have the deacons ready to pray for you. God is ready to receive you. Are you willing to receive God 100%? Not just turn to God. Not just say, well, I've been there before. Are you ready to follow God? Yeah, am I ready to follow God into everything that he's asking me to do? That's the question. Are you ready? Well, we're ready to pray. So if you guys want to stand up, so we'll get ready to pray. And uh, if any one of you wants to come up here, please do it. In Jesus' name, I ask you, do it today. Tomorrow is not your day. Next week, it might be too late. Nothing is guaranteed. Tomorrow doesn't belong to us. Today is our day if you heard the calling from God do not harden your heart come and follow Jesus come and follow Jesus he's ready for you and we know how much he loves us I heard this little child says I know how much God loves me he loves me this much. Is it true? Yes, it is. He was hung on the cross for all of us. So we may receive him today. So we may receive salvation. I hope you understand the calling that God, you know, has for all of you today. And I just want to say thank you for paying attention. God bless you.